It is a Monday. Happy Monday to you. April 19th. You're watching Wake Up Central. Rob Evans here alongside Michael Aaron and a gorgeous start. Look at this is so cool. That fog is awesome. Now, now we learned a moment ago. Scott told us it's called steam fog. Is that right? Scott, that's exactly steam, right. Steam fog. fog. You're going to find so you were listening. those bodies of water, yeah. the Arkansas River. Yeah. Never that's heard awesome. of it before. Never. I knew I knew the fog you know, came from the river, but never knew it was from. Oh called steam fog. You know what's not cool? What's that? The pollen. I told you oh, about that walk man. that I took at 5 a.m. Man. Or, yeah, and I got back yesterday. I don't really have that bad of allergies. I got back and I was coughing up a storm. Well, because you're just... we're covered in it. I mean, even though you're, oh. you, you're, the cars are just absolutely, when is that going to stop? It's tough. I think we're probably a, at least a couple more weeks away. We're just now nearing that peak pollen season. So get those Benadryls handy because you yeah. might need them for a few more days. Get the blankets handy because we're going to need those coming up in the next couple of days and if you've already planted well listen up there is the potential for a freeze going into Wednesday morning we'll talk about that but let's start with temperatures outside right now near freezing actually in a few locations 34 currently in Clinton 36 this morning in Russellville 41 in the capital city satellite and radar is all clear it's likely to stay that way most of the rest of the day seeing some dense fog in Clinton and in Searcy visibility now down to less than a half mile in some locations here's your high temperature Temperature for today 71. It's going to be really nice and pleasant sunshine all day long. We'll talk about those colder temperatures and the rest of the week coming up. Scott, thank you. 601 right now and after nearly a month, closing arguments begin today in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin. He's a former Minneapolis police officer accused of killing George Floyd last May. Once the arguments are heard, jurors will then decide if Chauvin is guilty of killing Floyd. CBS's Skylar Henry is outside the courthouse with details on what we can expect for today and how the city is preparing for possible unrest. After three weeks and 45 witnesses, the jury will hear closing arguments today in the trial of Derek Chauvin. I will invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege. The jury was not in the room last week when Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer, said he would not testify in his own defense. We have the truth and nothing but the truth. I do. They did hear each side build its case by breaking down the dramatic videos of George Floyd's arrest. In your opinion, should that restraint have stopped once he was handcuffed, and prone on the ground. Absolutely. In your opinion, was this a use of deadly force? It was not. Police officers don't have to fight fair. They're allowed to overcome your resistance by going up a level. After closing arguments, jurors will be sequestered for as long as it takes for them to deliberate. The city of Minneapolis is watching and preparing for their verdict. I just hope that we can come up with a resolution that doesn't result in more strife and more anger and and more despair. Members of the Minneapolis National Guard are stationed throughout the city. Some businesses have already boarded up in anticipation of unrest. Artist Simone Alexa painted some of them as a way to relieve her tension. And I think that energy really transfers from me into the piece and other people can feel that too when they see it. Chauvin is facing up to 40 years in prison if convicted of the most serious charge, second degree murder. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Minneapolis. The judge told the jury to pack for a long deliberation, but hope for a short one. Minneapolis public school officials are bracing for the verdict. They will switch students to remote learning later this week for their safety. You can stream the entire trial on THV11.com. And Arkansas protesters took to the steps of Little Rock City Hall following a heated week of police violence. This comes after the deaths of 20 year old Dante Wright in Minnesota and 13 year old Adam Toledo in Chicago. About 60 people showed up to the protest and not only focused on the latest lives lost to police brutality and racial unrest, but also activism and how to create change. A lot of people in the community say they believe a conversation needs to be had and that this was a start. Ways that we can convince the folks in positions of power that we have a coalition of people who want these same particular things and that we can move the conversation beyond committees and study groups and focus groups and and um, you know can can get some real results. The demonstration was peaceful throughout though there were armed counter protesters along with the armed security at the event. Organizers did have a permit from the city and the stretch of Markham in front of City Hall was closed for about two hours. Coming up on 605, and here's a look at the state's vaccine progress. We have received just over 2.2 million doses of the vaccine, given out more than one and a half million doses. It's about 67% of our total supply. 
UAMS is hosting two free pop-up vaccine clinics in South Arkansas this week. Tomorrow they'll give the first dose of the Pfizer shots in hope. The clinic runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Rising Star Baptist Church. Then Thursday they're in Camden at the Zion Hill Christian Academy building from 10 to 2. They'll be back three weeks later for the second dose. You do need to register online in advance. We have a link to that registration form on THV11.com. Speaking of clinics, many schools are starting to set up vaccine clinics for their students to get the shot. The Hot Springs School District held a vaccine clinic at their high school gym. They sent out a survey asking if students would be interested. About 100 people responded with yes. They ended up vaccinating 54. Meanwhile, the Benton School District is holding its clinics in the high school gym. They sent out a survey for their clinic and it got about 300 yeses. We always made it our, our top priority to make sure our staff and our students were safe and they were healthy. And this is just one other way that we can continue to do so in the Benton School District. Both school districts say that this won't be the end of opportunities for students. They will continue to send out surveys and set up clinics, especially when the Pfizer shot becomes available for those 12 and older. You can find other districts across central Arkansas that are making plans to vaccinate their students on THV11.com. On the national front, COVID cases and hospitalizations are on the rise again. This comes as the single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine only available since March remains on hold while cases of blood clots are investigated to see if that vaccine caused the complications. The CDC advisory committee scheduled to meet Friday to see if it can be used again. And Dr. Anthony Fauci told Face the Nation the vaccine could return to arms by the end of the week. One of the possibilities would be to bring them back but to do it with some form of restriction or some form of warning. But despite the J&J &J pause, health officials say the vaccine rollout is moving along at a great pace. Still, concerns continue to grow as the new COVID variants are beginning to emerge in more areas. Check this out. Saturday morning was full of kachows as Arkansas Children's Hospital in Springdale hosted 20 race cars from you all over. You nailed it. You nailed I, I tried. I yeah. tried, you know, uh, from all over to drive by and put a smile on the kids' faces. The kids couldn't go outside to watch, but they did get to cheer on their favorite car from the window. Kachow. There you go. There's not enough positives in the world. And, you know, like I say, anytime we can come out here and put a smile on their face and give them a piece of candy, just anything to make them happy and brighten their day. One of the drivers says the kids' spirits inspired him. Donations were collected to go toward the hospital. Organizers of the event and the drivers both say that they had a lot of fun. They hope to do it every year. And I want to let people know what happens behind the scenes here and how hard Michael Aaron actually works that during yeah. commercial break, he mm -hmm. was working on his kachow. I sat there and practiced he literally for a did. full hour. Because we, we had this story an hour ago and it found out that it's actually from Lightning McQueen from the movie Cars. And um, so we'll see if we can get a comparison, like a yeah. side by side. And see I, I think you nailed it this time. He was literally over there. Kachow. No, no, kachow. Yeah, you no, had no, to, kachow. You had to get the he right was, inflection. He, he did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, closer to home here in, <laughs> in Little Rock, a group has a mission to help those in need. THV 11 photojournalist Sam Belk shows us what the group did this weekend to help out the community. And we know that the people that are around us are in need, and so we want to do everything that we can to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We're always looking to find ways to be the hands and feet, you know? That's really cool. He said the same thing. So oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Today we've actually had a fish fry, we've done baptisms, we're currently cooking hot dogs, uh, we've got a shower truck here, and then we have also are doing haircuts. Uh, my friend uh, started doing all this with helping the homeless and everything, and reaching out and doing outreach programs. Uh, I'm actually his hairstylist and he asked if me and my girls can come up here and cut some hair, you know, and help out. And I was all for it. We go to the same church and everything. Uh, what we hope is that they'll eventually come back and that they'll want to be a part of the community because we know that lasting change in life is going to be brought forth by Christ, but then also hanging out with a new community of people. And we want to be that community for these individuals. But in order to get there, you have to first let them know that you care. And uh, we absolutely do. All right, Scott, what's the one thing we need to know about the weather today? Oh, man, this one's a tough one. Not it's going to be beautiful outside today. We're going to see a lot of sunshine temperatures warming up for the first time in several days back into the low 70s There's a strong cold front on the way, though. We'll have to talk about that and watch for the potential of a freeze. More details still ahead. Still
Still ahead, a scary crash involving a Tesla leaves two people dead. What we know this morning about the wreck and what it could mean for the future of self-driving cars. And if you've been having problems with your bladder, CHI St. Vincent has a new device that can help. Those details in this week's Wear the Gown. Right now it's 610 and look at that steam fog. Woo. Oh, not going to add any strife to your morning commute though. It's just on the <laughs> river right there, the Arkansas River. It's beautiful though. Cut this man off. It is beautiful. Look, I just learned the word steam fog today. Give me, I would want to use it every time I can. <laughs> use the, I go out there and use the word steam fog in your daily conversation today. I you challenge you. We're back with more Wake Up Central. Steam fog.